Hey everyone, so this is going to be a video on the Newton's second law questions with air resistance and friction. Um, so let's just get started. So we're given that Johnny Utah has a weight of 1000 newtons and uh, weight is being represented with a W here. And he jumps out of an aircraft. Various stages of his descent are shown to the right along with the air resistance R at specific points in his jump. Johnny Utah has a mass of 100 kilograms. So using the equation F equals MA, remember weight, air resistance, our forces, calculate the acceleration at the point in his jump. So if we go through this, we can see that A, B, C, D, E, and F are shown. And our little person here, that is Johnny Utah. So R stands for the air resistance, W equals the weight there. Okay, so it looks like in column two, we need to solve for the net force, and then column three, we need to solve for the acceleration. So let's look at the highlighted section right here. Look at the graph of the forces. Uh, I just meant the picture right here, so we're looking at those pictures. And we need to find the net force on Johnny Utah. And then we need to find the acceleration of Johnny Utah at a particular point by rearranging F equals MA. So the net force on Johnny Utah at point A. So we have R equals zero going up, and then the weight of Johnny Utah going down. And remember that Johnny Utah weighs uh, 1,000 newtons. So again, if we were to put him on like a axis, we would recognize that you know air resistance is acting upward, and that weight is acting downward. Okay, so air resistance is equal to zero, and that weight is equal to 1,000 newtons in the downward direction, so that net force should be equal to negative 1,000 newtons. Okay, so now we need to solve for acceleration. And remember that F equals MA, but that is not the only way that Newton's second law can be written. If we need to solve for acceleration, we need to rearrange this equation so that it has A equals bleh. So if we were to do that, A equals your net force divided by your mass. So we've solved for the net force. We already solved for it. It's in column two, so negative 1,000 newtons. And now the mass of Johnny Utah. Well, it's given to us right at the top of the problem, right? Johnny Utah has a mass of 100 kilograms. So if we want to solve for acceleration, all we have to do is plug in that net force, plug in Johnny Utah's mass, and solve. And this number should look very, very familiar to you because it's g, right? Negative 10 meters per second squared. So initially, all that is acting on Johnny Utah is g. Okay, so going back at b, let's look at the net forces. So we have Johnny Utah, and he's finally flying through the sky. Not flying, but falling through the sky. So he's being acted upon by air resistance. So air resistance, again, is shown as R, and the weight is shown as W. All right, so his weight is not going to change as he falls, but what is going to change is the air resistance. So he seems pretty spread out now, so air resistance has an effect on him. So we say that the air resistance is 400 newtons, and the weight of Johnny Utah is negative 1,000 newtons. So what must this net force be equal to? Well, the net force is equal to 400 newtons up minus 1,000 newtons down. So what is the net force here of Johnny Utah? You can go ahead and tell me there. So following the same procedure as we did for part A, we need to solve for the acceleration. So we can use the exact same equation, that net force over mass is equal to acceleration. So again, net force, we just solved for it in column B. Okay, so uh, I'll write that column B shows that net force, or column two there. Okay, so uh, the mass is not going to change for Johnny Utah. It's going to maintain that 100 kilograms. So go ahead, plug in that net force, divide it out by that mass, and you should get the acceleration of Johnny Utah. And it's going to be different from what you see at, up at the top. Why? Because air resistance, air resistance is affecting his motion. It's acting against his falling motion. It's trying to even slowing him down a little bit. So air resistance affects your net force, which in turn affects your acceleration. So for part C, we see that the resistance, again, air resistance is equal to 1,000 newtons, and the weight is also equal to 1,000 newtons. 
So this is a very important part here. So if we solve for the net force, we would say that it's equal to 1,000 newtons upward and 1,000 newtons downward. And you might be saying, well, Miss Brennan, doesn't that just equal zero? And I'll be like, yeah, it does. What does that mean? What does zero mean? Well, if we were to plug it in, let's just go all the way here and plug this in. Well, our acceleration now is equal to zero. So if our acceleration is equal to zero, what does that mean for Johnny Utah? It just means that he's no longer accelerating, right? But it doesn't mean that he's no longer falling. Johnny Utah is still falling through the sky at a pretty decent rate, but the acceleration is equal to zero meters per second, which means that his net forces, so the forces acting up and the forces acting down, are actually equal to each other. So the net force is equal to zero there. All right, and as we know, net force causes acceleration. So if the net force is equal to zero, then the acceleration must also be zero. So we call this point in time terminal speed or terminal velocity. Uh, so again, terminal speed is that point in time when the air resistance is equal to the weight acting down. All right, and it causes the acceleration to be equal to zero. Terminal velocity, pretty much the same thing, but it just means in one direction and not the band, but one direction of motion. All right, so for D, it's pretty much the same things as uh, A, B, and C. So I'm going to have you try these out on your own if you haven't already solved them out. Um, if you want to know the answers to them, please let me know. So after calculating the accelerations um, for the following questions, we need to highlight the positions where Johnny Utah's acceleration is downward, where his acceleration is upward, and where his acceleration is constant. Now this should be very uh, prevalent to you once you finish this entire diagram. All right, you're going to find certain points in time where Johnny Utah's a velocity is actually constant. Remember terminal velocity there, we just went over it. And you're going to find when acceleration is upward and when it's downward. So go ahead and highlight the answers there. So moving on to Molly and her rocket skates. <laughs> okay, so Molly decides to attach a rocket to herself while wearing a roller blades because, you know, why not? So if she has a mass of 25 kilograms, calculate the missing values in table 1 if there is no air resistance. So we are given the force, we are given uh, Molly's mass. All we need to do now is calculate for acceleration. So again, this is Newton's second law uh, units. So we should probably use Newton's second law. Uh, but we need to rearrange it in order to solve for acceleration. All right, so if you don't remember how to do that, again, start out by writing F equals MA. Highlight what you need to solve for. You need to solve for that acceleration. Now let's do some algebra. How do we move in order to get acceleration alone? Well, you need to divide both sides by M. Okay, so you should come out with that acceleration is equal to your net force divided by the mass. Okay. So looking at this now, we have a force of 100 newtons. And again, this is in the presence of no air resistance. So the force is 100 newtons. Molly's mass is 25 kilograms. So really all we need to do is take that force, divide it by Molly's mass, and we should get that the acceleration is equal to 4 meters per second squared. Okay, and I'm just looking at... Um, one, this picture here, and recognizing that when we do have uh, situations where we need to calculate certain direction for our person, we usually just put it in the positive direction, and the positive direction is always to the right, okay? Unless we need to change it, but in this case, let's never change it. Let's just say that's to the right. Okay, so we have that the net force is 200 newtons, and again, Molly is cruising down that uh, straightaway on her skates, and she has a mass of 25 kilograms. What is the acceleration there? Again, you're using the exact same equation. Plug in those uh, values and solve for the acceleration. So for part two here, it's a little bit different just because we're dealing with air resistance. So we now have to solve for the net force or the sum of the forces. 
So we have a force of 50 newtons uh, applied to the right, and then as she's going down that straightaway, we see that air is going to affect her motion. And that air is friction. What type of friction? It is air resistance. So as she's facing this air resistance of 50 newtons, we see that the sum of the forces is actually zero because she's applying 50 newtons and the air resistance is applying 50 newtons in the opposite direction. So if we were to solve for the net force, it would be 50 minus 50. So the net force is actually equal to zero there. And as we previously solved with Johnny Utah, we can see that the acceleration is also going to be zero meters per second squared. Okay, so again, if the net force is equal to zero, then the acceleration is equal to zero. So she must be going at a constant velocity. So now you just take the same principle here where she is applying 100 newtons and the force of air resistance is 50 newtons. Go ahead and solve for the net force and then solve for acceleration by plugging in the mass of Molly, which was given to you up at the top here that the mass is equal to 25 kilograms. So again, if you have any trouble on this, please let me know. Or if you just want to check your answers, again, let me know. I'll be happy to send you the answers to this. All right. I hope you're all having a great day. I'll see you soon.